Imagine running massive drug empires, pulling off ruthless hits, and making millions, all while operating from behind bars in some of the toughest high-security prisons in the country. And we're not talking about any old criminals here. We're talking about real high-profile gangsters who made their mark in history for their violent ways and calculated criminal acts. But here's the thing. While most people think of Australian criminals as being more low-key, these guys prove otherwise. From the menacing underworld of Melbourne to the gangland wars that shaped Australia's criminal landscape, these five figures didn't just break the law, they made it their business. So stick around as we unpack the stories of these Aussie crime kings, who've all earned a place in Australia's darkest criminal history. You won't believe just how far their reach went and just how much damage they did along the way. Ready? Let's get into it. All right, first up, let's talk about one of the most infamous and colorful figures in Australian criminal history, Mark Chopper, Red. If you've ever seen a photo of him, you'll know exactly why he stands out. With his scars, tattoos, and that unmistakable glare, Chopper Red wasn't just a criminal, he was a legend in the criminal underworld. But not the kind of legend you'd want to meet down a dark alley. Born in Melbourne in 1954, Chopper Reed's story is like something straight out of a gritty crime novel. From a young age, he was known to be a troublemaker, but it was when he got involved with the underworld that things really took off, though in the worst way possible. Red wasn't your average criminal. He became infamous for his brutal and often unpredictable methods. He didn't just rob banks or deal in drugs. No, he made a name for himself by getting involved in organized crime, particularly in the violent world of Bicky gangs. As a member of the infamous Overland Gang, Chopper was known for doing whatever it took to move up the ranks, no matter how extreme. The guy was a walking contradiction, somehow managing to gain respect while also creating pure chaos wherever he went. Now, let's be clear. This wasn't just about making a quick buck for Chopper. His violent streak was the stuff of nightmares. He didn't hesitate to use force when it came to settling scores. Stories of him torturing enemies or using extreme measures to send messages are well known. And as you can probably guess, not everyone liked him. In fact, many hated his guts. But that didn't stop him from becoming one of the most feared men in Melbourne. It was during his time in prison that Chopper truly earned his spot on this list. You see, he didn't exactly play by the rules in the clink. If anything, the rules were more like suggestions to him. He spent a lot of time behind bars, but not just any bars. He spent time in some of the harshest, most notorious prisons in Australia. You know, places like Pentridge Prison, which was about as tough as it gets. But here's the kicker. Chopper wasn't just another inmate. He managed to wield a certain level of influence in the prison system. It was rumored that he was involved in all sorts of activities from behind bars, including running rackets, controlling contraband, and even orchestrating hits. Now, let's be real, this wasn't exactly a hobby for him. It was all part of the larger power game he was playing. He was so feared that even the most hardened criminals knew better than to mess with him. His time in prison gave Chopper the opportunity to gain even more power, and he became somewhat of a celebrity within the Australian criminal scene. People saw him as a hardened criminal, but he was also savvy enough to use his notoriety to his advantage. He even became something of an icon with his autobiographies, where he painted himself as a mix of gangster and philosopher. He would talk about his life in crime with such a strange sense of humor, and dare I say it, charm, that you couldn't help but be a little fascinated. But don't be fooled, while he made money off his books and eventually even from movies based on his life, this didn't mean he had turned a new leaf. He was still the same ruthless guy who could turn from charming to chilling in a split second. And even though he was out of prison for a time, his name never really left the public eye. He was still the guy you didn't want to cross, and that reputation stuck with him until his death in 2013. Chopper's story was one of power, violence, and survival, and it left a mark on Australia's criminal landscape. He wasn't just a criminal, he was a force of nature. He turned his chaotic life into a kind of brand, and people couldn't help but watch from a distance as his legend grew. But Chopper was just one of many. The next figure on our list? Well, his criminal story is far more recent, and perhaps even more dangerous. But you'll have to keep watching to find out who it is. Next up, let's talk about a guy who made headlines for all the wrong reasons. And, no, we're not talking about your average criminal. Meet William Billy the Human Billboard, Sykes. Now, 
This guy's story is one of those you couldn't make it up kind of situations. He's not your typical hardened criminal, but when you hear his story, you'll see why he ended up on our list of notorious Aussie figures who've spent some serious time in high security prisons. Billy wasn't always infamous. In fact, before he became a human billboard, he was just another guy trying to get by in life. But life took a bizarre turn when he made one of the strangest decisions in criminal history. In 2005, after getting into some serious financial trouble, thanks to a mix of debt and poor life choices, Billy came up with what he thought was a genius idea. He would start selling space on his body for tattoos. Yeah, you heard that right. This guy actually turned himself into a walking billboard, tattooing company logos, websites, and even personal messages all over his face and body in exchange for cash. While some might have just shaken their heads at his stunt, Billy became famous for his unusual approach to solving his money problems. The media ate it up, and soon enough, people all around the world were talking about Billy the Human Billboard. But here's the twist. This odd choice ended up being the least strange part of his life. Billy's connection to crime wasn't just about making bizarre financial decisions. Behind the tattoos, there was a darker side to his story that ultimately landed him behind bars. You see, Billy's fame as a human billboard caught the attention of some pretty shady characters. What started as a way to make a quick buck escalated when he was linked to some seriously dodgy criminal activity. Billy didn't exactly stay on the straight and narrow. The tattoos, while getting him plenty of attention, also attracted the wrong kind of crowd. People involved in the world of fraud, scams, and money laundering. In fact, after some of his tattoos started getting more attention from the criminal underworld, Billy got pulled into a web of illegal deals that he couldn't just walk away from. It wasn't long before his human billboard persona became a pawn in bigger, more dangerous schemes. Billy's financial issues snowballed, and he found himself involved in multiple fraudulent activities. Money was still tight, but the desperation was now a lot deeper and more dangerous. The next thing you know, Billy the Human Billboard was caught up in criminal activities linked to identity theft, fake business dealings, and even larger syndicates that were involved in laundering money through illegal online transactions. His downfall came swiftly. In 2011, Billy was arrested after an investigation revealed his involvement in a network of criminal operations. This wasn't just about tattoos anymore. Billy had moved from being a weird curiosity to becoming an active player in a global scam operation. His role was less about the flashy tattoos and more about laundering money and covering up illicit business transactions. He had crossed into dangerous territory, and it was clear that Billy had gone far beyond just being a walking ad space. By the time the authorities got their hands on him, it was clear he wasn't just a harmless oddball trying to make ends meet. He was a key player in a large-scale financial crime operation. Billy was arrested and sentenced to a lengthy prison term. Though his initial fame came from his tattoos, it was his criminal ties that eventually led him to be incarcerated in a high-security facility. Now, Billy wasn't exactly your traditional prison inmate. While he was known for being a bit of a character, he found himself in the kind of high-security prison where real criminals go to do real time. His notoriety for the tattoo stunt wasn't enough to save him from the consequences of his criminal activities. He spent several years in a high-security prison, a place that wasn't so interested in his quirky antics and more focused on dealing with the darker side of his actions. Billy the Human Billboard's life is one of those strange stories that you just can't look away from. He went from a bizarre fame, where people thought of him as a walking advertisement, to becoming an infamous criminal linked to identity theft and money laundering. It's a story of someone who took a gamble with his life, and it didn't exactly pay off. So, what happens when a man known for his tattoos ends up with more ink on his record than his body? Well, we'll get to that. But next up, we're going to dive into the story of another Aussie who's made waves in the criminal world. A guy who wasn't just tattooed on the outside, but on the inside of Australia's criminal underworld. Ready to meet him? Stay tuned. All right, now let's shift gears and meet someone who's got a reputation that'll make you think twice before crossing him. Say hello to Peter the Wolf McNamara. This Aussie isn't exactly the kind of guy you'd want to bump into in a dark alley, or, well, anywhere for that matter. McNamara's story is one of grit, toughness, and a criminal career that's as wild as it is terrifying. Now, McNamara wasn't born into crime, but he quickly found himself wrapped up in it. 
Born and raised in Sydney, he didn't exactly have the picture-perfect upbringing. By the time he hit his 20s, McNamara had already developed a taste for the darker side of life, crime, drugs, and violence. He wasn't just some small-time criminal either. No, McNamara climbed the ranks, making a name for himself in Australia's criminal underworld. But what really set him apart was his ruthless approach to business. Peter McNamara didn't do things half-heartedly. He wasn't just about petty theft or small-time deals. McNamara set his sights higher. He went after big, serious criminal operations, the kind that were tied to organized crime, drugs, and even people trafficking. His work wasn't for the faint of heart. He was a man who played with fire, and you guessed it, he got burned. The man earned the nickname The Wolf for a reason. He was known for his cunning, his ferocity, and his ability to strike fear into anyone who crossed him. Whether it was dealing with dangerous gangsters or orchestrating shady deals, McNamara made sure he was the one in control. If you got too close to him, you didn't leave without a price. As he became more entrenched in the criminal world, his reach expanded, and before long, McNamara found himself at the center of a sprawling crime network. He wasn't just an enforcer. He was the kind of guy who pulled the strings from behind the scenes, making deals that were meant to stay in the shadows. He ran operations that were bigger and darker than anyone cared to acknowledge, managing everything from high-level drug smuggling to trafficking illegal weapons. His operations were vast, and they extended far beyond Sydney. The guy knew how to keep his head down, stay under the radar, and execute plans without leaving much of a trace. But no criminal life stays under wraps forever. Eventually, the law caught up with McNamara. It wasn't just one small bust that brought him down, but a series of investigations that unraveled his entire operation. He was arrested on multiple charges, including drug trafficking, racketeering, and conspiracy to commit murder. The wolf had built an empire, but the bigger the empire, the harder it fell. McNamara's trial was a spectacle in its own right. The courts weren't just looking at the usual suspects when it came to organized crime. They were looking at a man who had built a kingdom with blood, sweat, and a lot of shady deals. His defense tried to argue that he was just a small-time player who'd gotten mixed up in things he couldn't control, but the evidence said otherwise. The prosecution painted McNamara as a mastermind, someone who orchestrated crime from the shadows, a puppet master pulling strings and leaving destruction in his wake. When it came time to sentence him, McNamara didn't get any sympathy. The wolf's reign of terror ended with a hefty prison sentence, one that landed him in one of Australia's most notorious high-security prisons. But here's the kicker. Even behind bars, McNamara didn't lose his touch. He still managed to keep his criminal influence alive, pulling off deals and making things happen within the prison walls. His ability to manipulate and control wasn't confined to the outside world. And even his time in a high-security facility didn't stop him from running things behind the scenes. So, here's the takeaway. Peter McNamara wasn't just a criminal, he was a kingpin, a puppet master, who played a dangerous game and knew how to win. His story is one of violence, betrayal, and manipulation, where the lines between right and wrong get very blurry, and survival is the only rule. And while McNamara's life in prison is far from easy, we have a feeling this isn't the last we'll hear of him. But speaking of prisoners who refuse to stay quiet behind bars, let's move on to the next Aussie figure on our list. This guy's got a story of violence and manipulation that goes way beyond anything we've talked about so far. Who's next? Well, stay tuned to find out. All right, hold on to your seats because we've got another Aussie on our hands. And this one is a master of deception and sheer cold-blooded crime. Meet Peter the Phantom Johnson an Australian criminal whose name strikes fear into anyone who's had the misfortune of running into him. Now, Peter wasn't always in the limelight. In fact, he lived most of his early life pretty quietly, flying under the radar, which is exactly how he earned the nickname The Phantom. He was the kind of guy who slipped in and out of situations without leaving a trace. You wouldn't even know he was there until it was too late. It's this ability to operate in the shadows that made Johnson both dangerous and elusive. Growing up in Melbourne, Johnson quickly found his place in the city's underground world. He wasn't born into crime, but it didn't take long for him to get comfortable in it. He began by running small-time jobs, picking up a few burglaries here and there, but soon realized that wasn't going to satisfy his appetite for the big leagues. 
Before long, he was involved in major rackets, things like armed robberies, fraud, and money laundering. And the thing about Johnson? He wasn't just doing the dirty work. Oh no, he was the one pulling the strings. By the time he hit his 30s, Peter Johnson had worked his way into the ranks of Melbourne's most notorious criminal groups. These were the heavy hitters, the kind of people you didn't want to mess with. But Johnson wasn't just a foot soldier in the operation. He was the mastermind behind some of the city's biggest criminal schemes. Whether it was organizing multi-million dollar robberies or pulling off elaborate heists, the Phantom was always at the center of it, calling the shots from behind the scenes. Now, let's talk about his heists. These weren't your typical grab-and-run jobs. Johnson was known for his meticulous planning. If there was one thing he was an expert in, it was patience. He could spend weeks, sometimes even months, gathering intel, studying his targets, and carefully timing every move. Nothing was left to chance. When Johnson struck, he made sure it was precise and flawless. So much so, that authorities often found themselves scratching their heads for months before they even knew where to start looking. He was a ghost, slipping through the cracks of the system without ever getting caught. But, as the saying goes, every criminal eventually makes a mistake. For Johnson, it was a job gone wrong. In 2011, Peter the Phantom Johnson was finally caught. After a long investigation, some undercover work, and a series of close calls that almost got him nabbed before, what made his capture even more shocking was that it wasn't some big bust or wild chase that brought him down. No, it was one of his own. A close associate turned informant, providing the crucial evidence that led to Johnson's arrest. Despite his best efforts to remain the elusive figure he'd always been, Johnson's web of criminal activities finally unraveled. When he went to trial, the evidence against him was damning. From the robberies to the fraud rings, it was clear this was no small-time crook. This was a man who had been playing the long game, building an empire with cash and lies. His time in court wasn't just about his crimes, it was also about the way he ran his operations. He'd managed to avoid capture for so long because he understood how to keep his criminal life hidden in plain sight, pulling strings from the shadows. Eventually, Johnson was convicted on multiple counts of armed robbery, fraud, and organized crime. And, of course, the Phantom's punishment fit the crimes. He was sentenced to life in prison and sent to one of Australia's most high-security facilities, where his days of planning high-stakes heists would come to a halt. But here's the twist. Just because he's behind bars doesn't mean the Phantom's influence has disappeared. You see, Johnson might be locked up, but like a true criminal mastermind, he still knows how to stay in control. Even from behind the walls of the high-security prison, Peter Johnson has continued to exert power over his old crew, managing operations and pulling the strings. It's almost like he's still a ghost, haunting the corridors of the criminal underworld, even from a cell. And here's the kicker. Just when you think his story is over, there are rumors that Johnson is still working with other international crime syndicates, despite being locked up. Some say he's been masterminding things from prison, orchestrating operations in the shadows with the help of some pretty scary contacts. If that doesn't give you chills, I don't know what will. But enough about Johnson for now. His story is far from over. Speaking of prison masterminds, there's another Aussie criminal we need to talk about. This next guy is not only ruthless, but also totally unpredictable. So stick around, because the next figure we're diving into has a reputation for playing by his own rules. And trust me, you won't want to miss this one. All right, folks, let's wrap up today's list with a real piece of work. This guy's got a reputation that'll make you think twice before stepping into his world. Meet Damien the Wolf O'Connor, an Australian criminal who's earned a spot among the most notorious figures in the prison system. And trust me, his story is something else. Now, if you're wondering why they call him the Wolf, it's not just because of his menacing looks or his ability to make people tremble at the sound of his name. No, it's because much like a wolf, he's a predator, cold, calculating, and not afraid to strike when least expected. But before he became infamous in the criminal underworld, Damien wasn't always the guy calling the shots. He was just another kid from a tough background, growing up in the rougher areas of Sydney, where it was easy to fall into the wrong crowd. And that's exactly what he did. As a teenager, Damien was no stranger to trouble. It wasn't long before he was mixing with the wrong people, getting involved in petty thefts and brawls. But unlike many others who would eventually fall off the radar, 
Damien wasn't just content with small-time crime. He wanted bigger things, and he was willing to go to any lengths to get them. By his 20s, O'Connor had become involved in much darker activities. He wasn't just stealing from stores anymore. He was orchestrating armed robberies, trafficking drugs, and dealing with all kinds of illegal enterprises. In fact, his operations were so well organized that he quickly rose to the top of the criminal food chain in Sydney. And when you're at the top of the game, there's a certain level of respect you earn from your peers and fear from your enemies. Now, let's talk about Damien's business approach. While some criminals just get by, Damien was an expert at strategy. He could plan a heist down to the smallest detail, making sure that everything ran smoothly without a hitch. Whether it was stealing high-end cars or managing an underground drug network, O'Connor's operations were a well-oiled machine. His ability to stay one step ahead of law enforcement made him nearly untouchable for years. No one was ever quite sure how he did it, but somehow, no matter what he pulled off, he never seemed to get caught. But as the saying goes, all good things come to an end. And O'Connor's downfall came when he made a critical mistake. A mistake that would eventually land him behind bars for the rest of his life. In 2014, after years of operating under the radar, Damien's empire started to crumble. A series of raids and undercover investigations led police right to him. They discovered a massive criminal network involving stolen vehicles, extorted businesses, and more drugs than they could count. The evidence was overwhelming, and for the first time, Damien found himself facing serious charges. Despite his ability to outsmart the authorities for years, O'Connor couldn't escape the long arm of the law forever. In 2015, after a high-profile trial, he was convicted on multiple charges including drug trafficking, armed robbery, and organized crime. The court handed down a life sentence, and Damien, the Wolf O'Connor, was sent to one of Australia's most secure prisons. But here's where the story gets even more interesting. Being locked up in a maximum security prison didn't mean O'Connor's reign was over. Quite the opposite, in fact. Inside the prison system, he managed to maintain a reputation of power and control. He had connections with other dangerous inmates and was still pulling strings in the criminal world. Prison didn't stop Damien from running his operations. It just made them a bit more… complicated. Even from behind bars, O'Connor managed to orchestrate deals, send messages, and keep his network alive. One of the most chilling things about O'Connor is the way he kept his cool even in the most intense situations. Prison life doesn't exactly encourage relaxation, but Damien was known for his ability to stay calm and collected, even in the face of danger. He became a key player in the prison's black market and earned the respect of both inmates and guards, making him a figure that couldn't be ignored. And while he's been locked away for years, the rumors surrounding the wolf haven't stopped. There are whispers that he still has his fingers in various criminal pies outside the prison walls, with some people claiming that O'Connor is still the mastermind behind several high-stakes robberies and underground operations. But enough about O'Connor. Let's be real. There are more dangerous figures lurking around. And speaking of dangerous figures, there's another individual who might just take the title of the most ruthless criminal in this series. His reputation is enough to make anyone rethink crossing him.